Internal Revenue Service IRS Tax News. All taxpayers have the right to challenge the IRS's position and be heard. So we know the IRS has quite good listening skills. They're very good at being able to say, yes, yes, we can see that you're upset and we sympathize with you. Now, please give us all your hard earned money or else so that we can get back to throwing darts at a list of spending ideas that we compiled from all the people in the world that actually hate us in a desperate attempt to prove that we're actually super nice over here so they should totally stop trying to destroy us. In any case, that's just my interpretation. Let's get to the text. IRS Tax Tip 2021-129, September 1st, 2021. Taxpayers have the right to challenge the IRS's position and be heard. This is part of the Taxpayer Bill of Rights. There's a link to the Bill of Rights here, which clearly outlines the fundamental rights every taxpayer has when working with the IRS. Taxpayers have the right to raise objections. So obviously, if the IRS takes a position, you have the ability to argue against that position and the judge or the thing that you're arguing with is going to be the tax code. So you have to be in compliance, of course, with the law, with the tax code and be able to say, I do not think that your position that you are taking is in alignment with the actual law, the actual law being the determining factor and the basis on which arguments would be made. So you can raise an objection, provide additional documentation in response to formal or proposed IRS actions. So the IRX may, for example, look at your tax return and say, hey, I think there's something wrong with it. They may make an adjustment, a proposed adjustment, and you could then agree or disagree with it. And again, your guideline base rule should be the law. The law is the thing that's going to determine whether or not their position is correct or not in accordance with it. So expect the IRS to consider their timely objections. Uh, have the IRS consider any supporting documentation promptly and fairly. So the IRS should be able to consider the objections and they should be able to get back to you promptly. In other words, you can imagine a situation that if they didn't get back to you promptly, then they could basically indefinitely wait on forever and, and char charge you or compile up penalties and interest, which wouldn't be a good situation. So they're typically quite good at actually getting back to you in kind of a, the bureaucratic fashion, right? Then, you know, you send you a letter, you send them a letter, they get back to you with a month or 60 days or so on and so on. So receive a response if the IRS does not agree with your position. So if they don't agree with your position, they're going to say, hey, we do not think that you are correct in accordance with the law. They should explain exactly why they don't agree with your position in accordance with the law. And then you can take it from that point. So here are some specific things that uh, things this right affords taxpayers. In some cases, the IRS will notify a taxpayer that their tax return has a math or clerical error. If this happens, the taxpayer has 60 days to tell the IRS that they disagree. So if there's a math or clerical error and the IRS is saying, hey, look, something doesn't look like it adds up. We think it should add up to this. We're going to propose that we make this change. And do you agree with it or do you not agree with it? Now, if something said two plus two equals four and we had originally said two plus two equals three, then clearly we would be in the wrong in that point in time. And we would really have no basis on which to argue because clearly two plus two is, is four. So we couldn't really. right? But if, if there's something that was wrong in their assessment, then then we can go back and say, you know, it actually should have been three because it should have been one plus two or something like that and show the documentation to to for that. So should provide copies of any records that may help correct the error. So obviously, if that was a correction that you're making, that I should have put one instead of two and it should have added up to three instead of four, <laughs> then you'd have to show the documentation as to why you believe that would be the proper way to go. Uh, may call the number listed on the letter or bill for assistance. So normally when you get a letter from the IRS, there's usually going to be a phone number on it so that you could call. Can expect the agency to make the necessary adjustment to their account and send a correction if the IRS upholds the taxpayer's position. So here's what will happen if the IRS does not agree with the taxpayer's position. The agency will issue a notice proposing a tax adjustment. This is a letter that comes in the mail so they can propose the adjustment. This notice provides the taxpayer with a right to challenge the proposed adjustment. The taxpayer makes this challenge by filing a petition in U.S. tax court. The taxpayer must generally file the petition within 90 days of the date of the notice or 150 days if it is addressed outside the United States. 
Taxpayers can submit documentation and raise objections during an audit. If the IRS does not agree with the taxpayer's position, the agency issues a notice explaining why it is increasing the tax. Again, the IRS should be clear and transparent as to their position in alignment with the tax code. And then that's where your dispute, that's where, that's where you know, the, the judging factor will be. Are we in alignment with the law or not? Prepared to uh, pay in the taxes, the taxpayer has the right to petition the U.S. tax court and challenge the agency's decision. In some circumstances, the IRS must provide a taxpayer with an opportunity for a hearing before an independent office of appeals. The agency must do this before taking enforcement actions to collect a tax debt. These actions could, uh, could include levying the taxpayer's bank account. Immediately after filing a notice of federal tax lien in the appropriate state filing location, if the taxpayer disagrees with the decision of appeals office, they can petition the U.S. tax court. More information can be found at the links below. Publication 556, Examination of Returns, Appeal Rights and Claims for Refund, and Publication 1, Your Rights as a Taxpayer. There's links to those items here, and there'll be a link to this in the description.